This week on Council Bluffs News, Top 10. A local park receives national recognition for its exemplary character, quality, and planning. Helping the environment, Red River Waste Solutions presents a new truck to its workforce that is among few in the country and reduces emissions at an impressive rate. And Halloween safety, the police department gives helpful tips for kids and parents going door to door this holiday. That and more all in this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. One of the city's most beautiful areas is being nationally recognized. The American Planning Association recently named Bayless Park a great public place based on exemplary character, quality, and planning. Ten spaces throughout the United States have been added to the short list of the APA's great public places in America. There's very few of these awards that are given nationally. Among those 10, Bayless Park in Council Bluffs. It's a very exclusive crowd that we now have joined. The park, located on Pearl Street in downtown, has had many renovations since it opened in 1853. The most recent effort to fix it up came in 2007. The park was somewhat deteriorated. The fountain is pretty well gone. Uh, the community came together. The Iowa West Foundation offered a $2.14 million grant to start up the fundraising activities. There were committees appointed to help raise funds. More recent updates keep standards for the park high. About two years ago, we redid all the lawn furniture inside of it and sent that out and had it all refurbished. We're constantly doing things with the exterior and the sidewalks. So it does take some maintenance, but uh, the good news is uh, we've been able to keep it up keep it as a point of pride for the community. Bayless Park features many pieces, all of which considered the park for the Great Spaces Award. It's got nice vegetation, it's got various monuments, you know, it's got the fountain, you've got uh, the, uh, you know, the artwork. You know, so it all kind of comes together and, and uh, it's a good recognition. These old classic uh, downtown city parks around governments and their designs of a square block with, with walkways that feed into a center element. Uh, those were wonderful back in the early 1900s. There were lots of these. Uh, not many have survived and certainly probably very, very few have flourished the way Bayless has. The American Planning Association also picked 10 great neighborhoods and 10 great streets as a part of this award. Only two other parks in Iowa have previously received the Great Public Space Award. The Iowa West Foundation announces its third quarter grants for 2014. $4.5 million will go to a variety of organizations in southwest Iowa. The highest grant goes to the Council Bluffs Community School District. According to a press release, the $2.9 million will be split between two existing programs as well as fund a study for a new one. $1.8 million will go to the school administrative managers, which frees up time for principals to work as instructional leaders to support teachers. $1.1 million will support the district's voluntary summer school program in 2015 and 2016, and nearly $28,000 will fund a study for creating a middle years international baccalaureate program for grades 6 through 10. Another part of the Council Bluffs Interstate Construction Project opened Friday, October 17th. I-29 northbound from I-80 east is now accessible via bridge. Drivers are encouraged to look for the newly posted signs as the entrance is on the right side of the interstate at the I-29 northbound 24th Street exit. In an effort to help the environment, Red River Waste Solutions LP is changing how it picks up trash. Thursday, October 16th, the company presents a high-rate fuel-efficient vehicle with a ribbon cutting at the Council Bluffs Recycling Center. 
Compressed natural gas. That's what this new kind of garbage truck runs on. Better emissions, better for the environment and how they extract it. Also known as CNG, compressed natural gas is more beneficial than diesel fuel, which is why Red River Waste Solutions LP is making the switch. The actual truck body itself is going to be about the same, but up in the cab, the way the fuel is delivered, it'll be a little different. According to regional manager Gary Franklin, garbage trucks are one of the most polluting vehicles on the road. This will uh, increase better emissions by 20 to 80 percent. Right now, Red River Waste Solutions has two new trucks, with another on the way soon. By 2016, we want the whole fleet done, so we'll have six garbage trucks and another three recycle trucks, and hopefully we could push for more from there. These trucks make their official debut October 16th with a ribbon cutting at the Council Bluffs Recycling Center. I'm excited also because they're new trucks. I mean, these do take a beating, so um, I got the guys screaming and hollering. So hopefully we get them all soon and uh, be more reliable on the road too. Supporters of the change Black Hills Energy say compressed natural gas runs cleaner than gasoline and diesel fuels. CNG is also coming from the United States, making it more cost efficient as well as helping the environment with less emissions. These vehicles are rare, at least in this country. There are currently an estimated 110,000 in the U.S. and 12 million worldwide. Now to news around the bluffs. Shaped by the hair company Hair Salon, 22 years of operation, appointments by phone at 323-6686. In honor of International Archaeology Day, October 18th, the Western Historic Trail Center invites the public to join in on some activities. The University of Iowa's Mobile Museum features exhibits dating from the 1800s all the way back to 10,000 years ago. We have a paleontology exhibit, Iowa's Ice Age Giants. Um, we have an archaeology exhibit with a spotlight on the Glenwood people, which is over here in the western half of the state in the Lust Hills. And we have Cornerstones, which is the founding of the state of Iowa. This is the first year for the Mobile Museum, focusing on some of Iowa's history and how it has evolved. The motorhome travels throughout the entire state. This year's tour will last from April through November. Dogs take over Bayless Park October 19th for the sixth annual Canines in Costumes. Dressed as sharks, angels, devils, and other scary or cute creatures, even humans dress up for the occasion. And we've got lots of vendors and rescues out here today, games to play for your dog, all kinds of fun stuff. Canines in Costumes is a free will donation fundraiser for the Midlands Humane Society. All proceeds help the efforts of the nonprofit organization and its new facility opening early next year. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, the Council Bluffs Police Department reminds parents to keep kids safe on Halloween and offers some tips to ensure that. And after the break, Kelly Dix from Hitchcock Nature Center joins us to talk about its annual Enchanted Forest event for kids. It's geared towards um, children of all ages and we ask them to come and then they get to walk along a nature trail and meet some special people along the way. affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile. Dang it. To the invisible jet. Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach.
store your guns properly. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. I won't have to tell so many family members. I'm sorry. I won't hear as many scary stories. And I won't have to tell my kids. This isn't a drill. Please. Please, do it for us. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. At Council Bluff Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't, because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. opportunities and expand your knowledge with Iowa Western's continuing and career education. It was really intimidating to go back to school, but Iowa Western made me really feel like I could do it. Our goal is to help students achieve success from education to employment. Learn more, including information on extra benefits for Iowa residents at iwcc.edu slash continuing underscore education. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. Joining me in studio today is Kelly Dix from the Hitchcock Nature Center. Thanks for being here, Kelly. Sure, thank you. Um, the Hitchcock Nature Center is doing something this next weekend. Go ahead, tell me what it is. Sure, um, on Sunday, October 26th, from one to three, we have our annual Enchanted Forest event. So we ask, um, it's geared towards um, children of all ages, and we ask them to come, and then they get to walk along a nature trail and meet some special people along the way. And some of these special people are actually from an area high school. Go ahead, tell me who they are. Sure, we have um, some wonderful students from Missouri Valley High School and their drama department. They come out and they volunteer for us. And they put on um, different skits every year. This year the theme is about their favorite literary characters, so their favorite characters they may have read about in books before. And these kids, they just kind of walk around in the trails and just kind of learn about more things um, going on in nature too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they'll visit um, three skits along the way and they'll learn about um, animals and plants in nature and then they end at the lodge with pumpkin painting and carving activities after they are off the trail. Okay, and what day and what time is it? It's Sunday, October 26th from 1 to 3 p.m. And why do you guys want to do these events for these kids? Well, I think it's important for them to get out um, in nature, um, especially in the beautiful fall season to see all the colors, and um, it's going to be beautiful weather Sunday, but just for them to get out in nature and experience it and, and learn about nature in a fun way, too, as they're walking through the trail. Okay, Hitchcock is always doing something, so you guys mm -hmm. have another event coming up. Yes, in November we have our annual um, Hawk Watch Eagle Migration event, and that's scheduled for November 15th from 1 to 3 p.m. And um, people can come out. They, there are scheduled programs to learn a little bit more about the Hawk Watch. They can also join Hawk Watch volunteers on the deck or on the um, observation tower and hopefully identify some migrating raptors along the way. And then we also have raptor recovery um, coming, and they bring some of their education birds so you can see them up close and ask questions about raptors. All right, looking forward to Enchanted Forest on the 26th mm -hmm. and those other hawk watches coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So thanks Great. for being here, Kelly. Thank you. Stick around. More Council Bluffs news after the break.
Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Halloween is probably one of the best times of the year for kids. They get to dress up in costumes and go around the neighborhood for free candy. But there are some tips Officer Matt Brinkman from the Council Bluffs Police Department says to keep in mind to make sure everyone is safe on the 31st. There's a lot of little things you can do that are, that are kind of basic, but then you don't, you know, you want to give your, your kids some free reign to do what they want, but you got to kind of just watch them. Try to go into neighborhoods that you're familiar with. You know, don't just drive around and say, hey, let's try to hit these houses and stuff. Try to go to areas that you're familiar with, just obviously for the safety of the kids. Whether it's on your costume or whether your bag, always try to have something that's reflective. Um, take a flashlight. Have a flashlight with you that you're carrying. Don't talk to strangers because people are going to come up in the cars. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You don't want to have the mask because you're going to be walking on the sidewalk. You're going to be walking across streets. Yeah, you don't want anything that could cause you to trip and fall. Or obviously, you don't want to do anything to impair your vision where you can't see anything around you. Take your time. Only cross at intersections. Don't run out in the middle of the blocks. Always go down to the end of the block. Cross at the intersection. Look both ways before you cross the street. Not only do cars have to look for kids, the kids have to look for cars. The speed limit's 25 in a neighborhood. It's okay to go 15. You know what I mean? You're not in that much of a hurry. Take your time. This is for the kids. We want them to have a good, safe time, a safe environment. So yeah, just take your time going through the side streets and stuff where, uh, where obviously you can pay attention to the kids. Officer Brinkman also says to pair up or trick or treat in groups, only go to the houses with outside light on and make sure all pieces of candy are checked before eating. The Council Bluffs Community School District administration settles in at the Omni Center. October 20th, board members cut a ribbon to officially call the new 25,000 square feet space home. We have a superintendent's office, human resources, payrolls and accounting, um, curriculum, teaching and learning, all of those offices are here. Superintendent of CBCSD, Dr. Martha Bruckner, says the district needed more room for all of its office workers, but wanted to stay in Council Bluffs. President of the school board, J.J. Harvey, appreciates the support from the community with the new facility. I think this sets the stage for the whole school district, and when you come in and apply for a job, this just tells everyone this is what it's going to be throughout the whole district. People tour the new space, which has dozens of offices and cubicles for its workers. The school board will also hold meetings in the new conference room. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, these animals are available for adoption at the animal shelter. Plus, see what's going on this week in our events calendar. We'll be right back. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's 
a new model. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. What does the world need? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Time now for Pets of the Week. Hi, my name is Misty and I'm a volunteer with Solace, support our local animal shelter. And this big guy here is Ace. Ace is a boxer about four years old. He is so sweet, great attitude, um, surrendered here because his family could no longer care for him. They say that he is potty trained as well <laughs> and he loves to give kisses. If you are interested in adopting Ace, his file number is 1673. This is Rowdy. Rowdy is a boxer pot hound mix. He's a brown brindle, very sweet guy. He's just a puppy though, he's only a year old and he has been at the shelter since August 15th, so a good chunk of his life. He needs a good home um, that's willing to do some work with him because he is, he's just a puppy still. If you are interested in adopting Rowdy, his file number is 786. This is Cooper. Cooper is a cute little six-month-old kitten. He was found as a stray on 12th Street and Avenue D. He is a gray and white domestic short hair. If you are interested in adopting Cooper, his file number is 1248. 
This is Patches. Patches is dressed in her little monster t-shirt for Halloween. She's about six months old. She is a domestic short hair brown tabby. She was found as a stray at the Cottonwood Apartments. So she is now available for adoption, but if you are interested in adopting her or if you have been looking for a kitty meeting her description, her file number is 1544. And if you are interested in any of the pets you've seen here today, you can come down to the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter at 2821 South 15th Street in Council Bluffs. Time now for our weekly events calendar. Learn about the disadvantages of kids and technology at the Micah House Thursday, October 23rd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Anyone is invited for a presentation and free lunch. For more information, contact Tiffany at 712-325-5629. Prepare for the Zombie Walk Saturday, October 25th at 11 a.m. A silent auction and makeup will begin at Barley's Bar and Grill at 114 West Broadway. The walk begins at 2 p.m. from the 100 block and later there will be a standoff at Bayless Park. Three Bee Farms in Griswold, Iowa is hosting Pumpkin Fest also on Saturday. Parade around the orchard in your Halloween costume at 2 p.m. Pumpkin painting and a pumpkin dessert contest will also take place. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. CBTV is always looking to hear from you. You can send questions or comments to CBTV at iwcc.edu. Call 712-325-3312 or follow us on social media. Search CBTV17 on Facebook and Twitter. Keep watching CBTV for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community on the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. See you next week.